Listen to the music of the breeze, children, and see what it has to say. Sometimes a tune can teach you a lot about the world. Sometimes it's just noise, but the only way to find out is to listen. Maybe you're at a ball game. Maybe you just went down to the hot dog store and grabbed yourself a crab sandwich with the spare change from your mommy's ironing racket. Now you're trying to figure out which side of your lunch to start from because you suffer from intense headaches every time the sun is half behind the cloud and half not behind the cloud, which realistically sounds very frequent, but it's got to be exactly half, so right now you're okay. You pick up all your napkins, you go down to the corner, you lay the napkins out in a pretty beautiful arrangement with small pictures, some stickers, a little bit of white out, gluing them all together to make a tapestry on the street corner. And the passers-by, they don't know you because you're a stranger in this town, rushed in with the running water at a nearby rapids, flipped over like a raft in the stream on a stormy day. They think you need medicine. They're on to something, but they don't say nothing or do nothing to help you because they got a busy schedule. You're drawing pineapple dinosaur poppy anvils with your mouth and that's where the paint comes out. Ever since the robot dinosaur anvil tomato zombie demons took you from your sleep in the middle of the bedtime night and replaced your teeth with the paint tubes. This is why you got compulsions now. You need to make the pretty pictures or else you don't get to keep your mouth or at least that's what the pixie that lives in your underpants keeps saying. So you go to work every goddamn day, picking up chains from the floor, magnetically affixing them to the opposite side of the floor, looping things and making knots. It's a tough job, but if you don't do it, then the local economy and the small businesses are going to burn up in a cloud of ash and blow away down the river next time there's a storm where the lit matches keep falling sideways out of the window of the local delicatessen owned by a gentleman who has never told you his name because you're a stranger, he doesn't know you. Doesn't want you using knowledge of his name to fake tax documents and make a little puppet that runs around and tells people how they're gonna die. And that's where the harp comes in. You saved up all the money you earned, squirting paint from your teeth onto napkins on the sidewalk. Got yourself a nice harp. It's a novelty harp with the outside is shaped like a spider and the inside is shaped like... It's just harp strings. You still gotta be able to make the tunes. And you do that. You make them with the tunes and your fingers go up and down the strings with the pluckety pluck pluck. And people think that's pretty cool and they chuck dimes at you. Some of them land in the shoe that you hollowed out. Some of them just pass right through your hand because your hand is all sort of phasing in and out of existence ever since the goat hermit spider jackalope reindeer monster took your hands away and replaced it with the magnetic chain link hands from the land where the pixies run amok all over the promenade every St. Patrick's Day as an act of revenge against an otherwise unknown and unremembered scamp by the name of David Papperson. This was a mistake. It turns out, it just makes the music all the more enchanting. And when the people listen, they remember a time when the guy named Feliz once robbed their uncle at gunpoint in the middle of a college dorm room because... 
there was football on TV. And as everybody has figured out since then, the radio waves caused the frontal lobes to get all wacky. It's more like they're back lobes now. But the back stands for bacteria, because brain bacteria, it's actually a virus, but close enough to brain bacteria, they just chew and they chew and they're so hungry, they never stop chewing. That's why we're all idiots now. Not me, though, because I got one of them special Q-tips with the anti-radio wave radiation microphone clock sound tape on them. And I rub them all over the inside of my brain and now I can't talk right, but at least I'm safe. At least I'm safe.